What's up you amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. I have a really cool episode for you guys because I went hunting recently and we found a blind SSRF vulnerability but we did not report it. Let me tell you guys right, right now. So first of all a little bit about SSRF, what exactly is a server side request forgery. It's going to make it so that the server makes a request when we ask it to uh, in our name to a different server or service. So in this case what we were able to do and I'll tell you guys how I test for it later is we were able to make the server make a request back in HTTP protocol to our server. Now what is blind SSRF? You have your normal SSRF vulnerabilities which will be somewhat more impactful because those actually return some value and they actually give you some feedback on the things that you're trying to do. Blind SSRF is when you don't get any feedback in the UI at all. So we noticed that this SSRF was triggering because we were getting some burp collaborator requests. More about that later. As for the impact, now what Portswigger does is, is, is it describes the impact of a blind SSRF as often being lower than a fully informative SSRF vulnerability. That's because you can only fire the requests, but you do not get any useful information back from the requests. This makes it a lot harder to do any type of meaningful uh, attack. So that's why they are often uh, rated a lot less impactful. Now they might still be impactful. This doesn't mean that blind SSRF is harmless in all cases because you still might be able to get some backend systems to execute some things that you're not supposed to because they might only be accessible from the internal network. Now when something is only accessible by the internal network and we get one of the internal servers to the request for us, so the SSRF happens there, we do still have an impactful vulnerability. Remote code execution is also possible, but it often involves spraying the endpoint with all types of CVEs and like a whole list of vulnerabilities and it's not going to be as um, as easy for everybody this is not something simple at all now um, how you can find them that's something that uh, ports rigor is giving us a guide on the specifically re uh, recommend out-of-band testing now out-of-band testing is where we actually use some other webhook that's hosted by us we are currently using the burp collaborator we generate one of the payloads and then of course we paste that payload into the field that we want to paste it into uh, and when we do that we and we get a callback it will show up in here so as you guys can see we are pulling the collaborator interactions when we do get a callback from the server we will get one in here one callback and it will note which type it is which is also important because usually you will get http back but sometimes http outbound might be filtered and you might only be getting dns results back that usually tells you that the http outbound is filtered on there now there are a couple of things you can do with blind ssrf uh, i usually just try and if i encounter it i try a couple of simple things you know like here this shell shock exploitation is one thing you can try but uh, i rarely if ever i have never for myself reported a blind ssrf now other people might have i'm really interested to hear what you guys opinions are uh, have you found any blind ssrfs before and if you have have you reported them let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the video i would really appreciate a thumbs up because i work hard for this stuff and you guys you guys are my world it makes my day when i see those video views and those thumbs ups go up so thank you very much everybody for watching i hope you enjoyed the episode and i hope i'll see you in the next one Bye, everybody.